Hey guys, Jeremy here. Now, admittedly, this has been a long time coming. Uh, I've only done about like four episodes of season three of Supernatural without reading your guys' comments, so I'm going to do that video here now. Admittedly, I probably will not do this again. I'm probably just going to read them off. I've slowed down now with going back to work, so I don't have to worry about kind of like being over ahead of myself. At the same time, this is actually cumbersome. This actually takes more time to do this than it does to actually do it right after the video. So we're going to start all the way back with your guys' comments for um, for bedtime uh, stories. Uh, first one here, happy to see you gave bedtime stories a two. Not a very interesting story, only noteworthy part was the demon that Sam shoots at the end was his fiance at the time. They broke up and then Jared met his wife on the next season. I actually didn't know that. I never knew that. So that's actually a pretty cool little piece of information there. Now we're going to start about the Red Sky. Uh, Red Sky Morning is a lazy take on the Flying Dutchman that screams the low budget season 3 had compared to future seasons. It's exactly the same feeling I have as the previous episode. It's visually entertaining but lacks story pieces of exposition that don't make any sense. Like Bella feels obligated to stopping the vengeful spirit and we never understand completely why. There are only two things that I really love and take away from this episode, the characters and their overall banter and the tie-in with the two brothers who portrayed each other as a foreshadowing for the overall episodes and seasons where the brothers are against each other. Shout out to the random usage of Sam summon summoning the angry sailor and using Castile's name though. This episode isn't nearly as bad as bedtime stories, but it's definitely strays from so much potential story. I actually don't feel that. I felt that this episode was really good. Like it is one of my favorite ones of the season. I feel that we get a really cool prelude of Bella's history. There's a lot of really funny banter in it. There's some visual effects that are really well done in it. Um, and the brothers fail. Like I pointed out, they, they aren't saving the guys. Um, there's a cool little backstory to it. Yeah, the budget's a little low, but that's because it's a CG show. Like, they use the CG in special parts. I thought that some of the effects were actually pretty decent in this episode. I, I don't exactly agree with that comment, though, but that, that's your guys' opinion. Is like Misha Barton's Sixth Sense or not the OC? I love this line Dean says in the episode. Admittedly, I can't remember. But yeah, most people associate her with the OC, but her first breakout role was in the Sixth Sense. So now we're moving on to the next episode. Uh, this one is... Uh, I think this is what the Red Sky at Morning comments about Fresh Blood. Fresh Blood is my second favorite episode of the season. The cinematography and the director of photography, that's the same guy, really <laughs> shined the best for me in terms of supernatural horror. Gordon's death is badass with Sam literally ripping his head off with barbed wire. The show needs to be bring back a creative looking deaths. I mean, I guess Gordon gets to be in purgatory with his sister. It's a shame when Dean goes to purgatory, he doesn't run into Gordon or his sister. There's no way they could afford Sterling K. Brown to come back. Kind of like uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan in terms of price. Um, and I also don't think Sterling K. Brown has that much of an obligation to come back to the show. If Benny killed them while they were in purgatory, it shows why Dean is so close to him. Anyway, I love how Gordon turns into the monster he hates and uses it as a moral gray means to help attempt to kill Sam. The acting between the two brothers is very emotional and honestly some of the best work in the show. This episode also delivers one of my favorite lines from Dean while confronting the vampire who turned Gordon. Vampire, I was desperate. You ever feel desperate? I lost er everyone who I loved. I'm staring down eternity alone. Can you think of a worse hell? Well, there's hell. That's actually, yeah, that is a pretty good one. Fresh Blood is an awesome episode. Yes, for Gordon's story playing out, but my favorite aspect is the brother's emotional journey. The episode starts with Dean recklessly using himself as bait for the newly turned vampire, much to Sam's frustration that Dean keeps risking, uh, taking risks that he wouldn't have prior to selling his soul. Then we get two great bro moments towards the end of the episode. Sam calls out Dean for pretending not to be scared, and Sam asks him to stop the act and just be his brother again, just cause. Yep, that was a pretty good part. Miracle of miracles. Dean actually takes this to heart because he doesn't like seeing his brother hurting. Great acting from both the boys. But it doesn't play out like Sam hoped. We get a final scene of Dean teaching Sam how to fix the Impala, which soon Dean won't be around to. Oh, the pain of the season. A lot of these moments are reasons why I cared about the season so much is because there was a finality to it. There was a risk. There was something that was very uncertain, which has obviously very much changed in the show now. But this was a great aspect of this episode. Moving on to the next one. Now, these are your guys' comments about the Christmas episode, I believe. Fun fact about the Christmas episode, the scene where Sam hands Dean the eggnog, let me know if it needs more kick. That's not fake booze. Jared gave it to Jensen as a joke, so the reaction was legit. 
from what I've heard about these guys, that doesn't uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Anyway, the Christmas special episode has gone to be one of my favorites. It has everything from heartwarming scenes before melodrama became norm of the show to scary as hell, sh uh, scary as shit scenes, as well as some really good comic relief. First time I saw this episode, I thought I, he was going to legit kill the kid, only to have Killer Santa head up the head for the cookies and a terrified kid standing there in utter shock. If you've seen the trailer for the second season of The Boys, Kripke uses a very similar uh, scene for Black Noir. I actually, I have not looked at anything for The Boys season two yet. Not even any of the previews, because I'm really excited to watch it. But I digress, best lines in the episode. Oh, someone owes a nickel to the swear jar. You know what I say when I feel like swearing? Fudge, I'll try to remember that. I actually do that myself. Um, I do say fudge. Uh, Mark, who you see on the show several times, makes fun of me for it all the time. Later in the episode, don't you fudge and touch me or I'll fudge and kill you. Very good. Always cracks me up. I can't remember if this episode was the one that introduced Pagan God to the show or not, but it's a good one. Actually, I can't honestly remember, but I remember the, 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 the Scarecrow. The Scarecrow kind of was like a Pagan God, like not ex exactly a Pagan God, but in a similar realm in terms of making sacrifices for good weather, which... Again, I love how they used it in, in the Christmas episode to explain why they were shooting this episode when there was no so, because that was definitely a good way to explain how the episode saved on budget with no snow. Because snow costs a lot. It costs a lot. Some of the early Monster of the Week investigation is not the super exciting, but so many great moments make this a stellar episode with something for everyone. Uh, this is truly how you would expect Supernatural to do Christmas. Santa violently kidnapping parents in front of their little kids, showing some really squirmy torture. Fingernail anyone? Yes, I hate the fingernail part. Then killing the monster with the Christmas tree. At one point, Dean rips off one of the, uh, the branches and he full on wax. I think the guy with it, it, it's such a funny hit. It's probably one of the worst hits in the whole show, but it's just so funny how ridiculous the situation is that he's hitting him with a, and it's like making full on contact, not just like, oh, or like putting annoying tree sap on you. Amusing humor throughout and truly touching flashbacks with Sam learning about monsters. Dean gets his necklace and we are reminded of how neglectful John was of his sons, leaving Dean to be the one who truly has to raise Sam. That leads to a touching final scene where Sam puts his concerns aside and does something for Dean, illustrating the loving family spirit of Christmas as well as any movie. The Monster of the Week gets a 4 or 5 out of 7, but the humor and the emotional aspects get a 7 out of 7. I actually really like the monster. I think that the evil Santa Claus, while kind of not, like they don't fight an evil Santa, which I feel was a little bit unfortunate, but I find the two old couples just hilarious. Um, it's a massive, massive joke on Hallmark movies because they even make a joke like it's a Hallmark Christmas at the beginning and everything, everything about how the episode goes except for um, the snow, the lack of snow is a perfect play off of the ridiculousness of working on Hallmark Christmas uh, movies. I should talk about this sometime. For my own amusement, favorite lines, we're just here to watch you. Oh yeah, that's when Sam puts himself into the uh, the danger, the, the stranger danger zone. The boys are respectively singing round the table and round and round instead of round yon virgin. Oh yeah, my dad laughs so hard when uh, they come into the, the drunk Santa's place and they sing Silent Night. He laughs so hard every time we watch that part. Did you sell them for free? Hell no, it's Christmas. People pay a buttload for this crap. That's the spirit. That's Hallmark. Best part of the Christmas episode was flashbacks. Those actors who played young Sam and Dean were iconic in my eyes watching as kids. So when they changed actors later in the season, it was we or later in the show, it was weird. And I can't remember which season did that exactly, but obviously they got older. They kept young Sam for a while though. I know that when there's the high school episode in either season four or season five, uh, obviously older Dean is different, but younger Dean is still the same young kid, if I'm correct. Uh, I genuinely miss flashback moments like this. The Monster of the Week was fine. Such episodes continue to remind me of how things were when they were a threat. The boys have gone, went through so much in that recent season that they, when they do struggle, it's so jarring considering in other episodes of those seasons, I recall they had an easy time with werewolves, etc. Anyways, a fine episode, 5 out of 7. From Fresh Blood episode previously to the series finale are great, solid episodes for the show. A Very Supernatural Christmas is my favorite episode of the season. I love the TV special opening and the title card. My favorite moments of the episode are Sam and Dean's awkward caroling, 
Sam tragically discovering that there's no such thing as Santa and discovers monsters are real on Christmas Day, of all days, to the brothers killing pagans with a Christmas tree. Makes you wonder how everything in the house is fake, yet they had a real tree and wood that could kill them. Still perfect irony, like having the thing that would kill you in your own home. The end scene with Sam and Dean celebrating Christmas and it's snowing on the Impala with exceptional camera work. Yeah, really did like that pan out. I love the horror aspect and the camera work in this episode overall. Pretty cool, Dean gets the amulet that can track God and makes it. You wonder what Bobby originally thought it, it, it did in the scene where he's giving it to John Winchester saying it was really special. I watch this Christmas episode every Christmas as a tradition while people normally watch It's a War Normal Life. It's a Wonderful Life. I actually, I, I, I watch Eight Crazy Nights or the Pinky and the Brain Christmas special. I'm not even Jewish. And technically, Eight Crazy Nights isn't that good of a movie. Love the thumbnail of Vamp Gordon's face. He's about to release if you catch my drift. Oh, jeez. Anyways, guys, those are all your comments from the last three episodes. Um, the ones that you put at the end of the Christmas episode, I will be saying those in the next episode review. So you don't have to worry about that. I won't get more of these. I hope you enjoyed it. Next uh, episode review will be coming really soon, I promise. Stay safe out there. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. And we'll see you on the next Supernatural Season 3 episode review. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.